Can't wait another couple of weeks for Google's Pixel 7 to finally hit stores? Well, in that case, Motorola's fresh new Edge 30 Ultra may be the flagship smartphone for you. Like the Pixel 7, you've got a lovely stock Android setup here, as well as flagship specs across the board, including a 200 meg main camera. Movie fans, gamers, amateur photographers, pro photographers, and anyone who wants to wrap their hands around a near 7 inch beast. The Motorola Edge 30 Ultra should satisfy all of these people and more. I've been using it as my full-time phone for over a week now, so here's my in-depth Motorola Edge 30 Ultra review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now the design reminds me in some ways of Samsung's very own Ultra phone. Motorola's Ultra looks smart and somewhat unassuming. It doesn't exactly scream mega flagship at you, there's no sexy trim or bling or bits of flair here. But what you do get is some attractive symmetrical curving, with the front and back glass panels almost meeting on either side of a sandblasted aluminium frame. And if you're not a fan of bezels, well great news, there's practically bugger all of any of that stuff here on the edge. That black back end may look a little bland compared with some more jazzy rivals, but it feels nice with its soft touch finish. Clutching the Edge 30 Ultra is like slipping your hand inside of a lovely luxurious velvet glove. Up front you've got Gorilla Glass 5 plus a pre-installed screen protector and flip it around in that lovely satiny back. Mm. Oh sorry, uh, that's also Gorilla Glass 5. And after a week of some pretty rough handling at times, we do have one teeny tiny little nick down here at the bottom end, nothing major. But if you do want to keep your Edge 30 Ultra looking box fresh, highly recommend slapping the bundled condom case on here. And yeah, hands up, I did uh, at one point fumble the Moto Edge 30 Ultra and drop it from about a year high uh, onto a very hard floor indeed. And thankfully, no nicks or bumps or scrapes off that one. My only real complaint as far as the durability is concerned is that the Edge 30 Ultra is only IP52 rated, so it can get a bit moist, but nothing more than that. You can't fully submerge it and expect it to survive, unlike a lot of other rivals, including quite a few mid-rangers these days. When you boot the bugger up, you'll find that it's Android 12, not quite the latest, freshest Android 13, but you do get three years of OS updates and four years of security updates with the Edge 30 Ultra, which matches or betters many rivals out there. Which is pretty bloody unusual for Motorola, actually, who tends to only offer a year or two of support, but we'll see how timely these updates actually roll through to the Moto Edge 30 Ultra. And I do miss some of the Pixel exclusive features, such as the live transcription, the call screening, etc. But Motorola has bunged on some extra bonus bits, which are very, very worthwhile indeed. You've got Ready4, which allows you to share all kinds of content with your laptop, your TV, etc. And also a dedicated gaming mode, which is great for your online shooty ultra-violence sessions. And also, naturally, the Torch Chop is one of the best phone features ever conceived. <laughs> Android's one-handed mode has also jumped onto here, which is a big bloody relief because this is a big bloody phone. And I'm also really liking the X-axis haptics as well, which gives you a good bit of feedback whenever you're typing, gaming, whatever. The motor isn't exactly whisper quiet, but it is pretty subtle compared to some out there. And that in-display fingerprint sensor is a good one too, despite being an optical effort, rarely balks up on me. So very rarely do I even have to resort to the face unlock, but when I do, I find that that tends to work even in pretty low light, so again, very dependable. Now the Moto Edge 30 Ultra's 6.67 inch POLED display with its central selfie cam, orifice and slopey edges is again reminiscent of the Samsung S22 Ultra. And that's also true of the bright poppy visuals that are pumped out at your face from this thing. It's a Full HD Plus panel with HDR10 Plus video support and 10-bit colour reproduction, which means lifelike action pumped at your peepers. It's super bright when needed with lovely wide viewing angles, basically everything you need. Plus, that 144Hz refresh rate means that everything looks as smooth as it does gorgeous. However, unfortunately, those sloped edges do prove rather problematic when you are gripping the Moto Edge 30 Ultra because Motorola hasn't done anything to counter palm fat and finger intrusion. And this does result in some quite bulky behaviour here on the Ultra. So, for instance, sometimes you'll be reclining on the sofa, just holding the phone up like so. You'll find the screen is unresponsive or doing stuff that you don't expect it to do. And it's particularly bad when you're using the camera. I've had to completely change the way that I clutch the phone when I'm using the camera to some sort of weird pincer movement like this because if I hold it like this then I find that quite often I'm tapping that shutter button and nothing is happening. 
No bother at all with the Dolby Atmos tuned stereo speakers. These are loud and clear enough so you can prop up the Moto Edge 30 Ultra in your kitchen and enjoy some shows while smashing together a pickled onion sandwich. And of course the subtle headphone jack here on the Edge 30 Ultra, standard stuff really for a flagship smartphone these days. If you do need a headphone jack then you'll have to look to the likes of the Zenfone or the Xperia's instead. But the wireless streaming via Bluetooth 5.2 has been absolutely flawless. Plus, if you want to download loads of tunes or movies or whatever to enjoy on the go, while well, you've got 256 gigs of internal storage on the Edge 30 Ultra. Not expandable via micro SD, uh, but that's okay because it'll take a long bloody while to fill up that kind of space anyway. And there's no slacking when it comes to the performance either. You've got a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset backed by 12 gigs of DDR5 RAM, which means your pokes, prods and swipes result in instant action. And yeah, you got built-in cooling, which proves reassuringly effective for gaming, even if you decide to sack off an entire afternoon to bugger about in Genshin Impact. And that's with all of those graphic settings kicked all the way up. The Moto Edge 30 Ultra does get a little bit toasty around the camera chassis, but it still stays cool enough to keep the phone from throttling or my fingers from singeing. And thankfully those curved screen edges didn't cause me any consternation when murdering fictional beasties, or when I was having my spleen blasted out of my body by irritating youths with stupid usernames on sh** like Call of Duty. In fact, this smartphone was such an effective gaming device that often I was the one doing the spleen punching. And as mentioned before, you've got Motorola's gaming mode on board as well, which is almost as comprehensive as offerings from MIUI, ColorOS, etc. Now it's a pretty sizable 4610 mAh battery crammed into this gorgeous symmetrical frame and that definitely does the job. I found I tended to get around 6 to 7 hours of screen on time, full on screen time as well, lots of camera play, bit of gaming, lots of video streaming etc before that battery was finally wiped. So I did find that most days I staggered into bed with at least 20%, usually around 25% battery life remaining. And Motorola has absolutely nailed it when it comes to recharging as well. You've got 125 watt fast charging support when you bung a cable in the Edge 30 Ultra. So you'll get a half charge in just under 10 minutes. You've also got 50 watt wireless charging support, which I tended to use again, very fast indeed, and 10 watt power sharing support. So last up for the Moto Edge 30 Ultra review, how is that 200 meg camera that everyone is banging on about like it's the second coming of Christ? Well, the Moto Edge 30 Ultra uses pixel binning in the default auto shooting mode, so don't expect 200 megapixel photos every time you tap that shutter button. Probably just as well, because that would be total overkill anyway, and it would also murder your storage to boot. I turned on the Smart High Resolution feature in the Ultra's drag down settings before I began testing, and I found that this activated basically all of the time when shooting daytime snaps, giving you 50 meg images that are packed with fine detail and rather natural looking colours. It's only in more ambient conditions where that pixel binning is ramped up to brighten your shot. And this results in a 12.6 meg image that still often looks good when you check it out on a bigger screen, although dim light does mean a serious detail drop. Alternatively, Motorola has also included a 200 megapixel ultra res mode, which can capture finer detail in decent light. It takes a wee while to shoot a pic, but it's handy if you later want to crop into a photo in lieu of a proper dedicated telephoto lens. Of course, these snaps are bloody massive in size, often weighing in at around the sort of 50 to 60 megabyte range, so you'll want to use this feature sparingly. The Moto Edge 30 Ultra's massive sensor can absorb a lot of light, which works out great for your low light shots, as does the optical image stabilization to counter any small handshakes. The night mode still helps to slightly boost the brightness on occasion, but often it's not even necessary. So overall, gotta say, I was impressed by the Moto Edge 30 Ultra's main camera. It's versatile and it's not put off by crappy or harsh lighting. And you've also got the usual Motorola AI help as well if you don't want to think too hard about framing your shot. You've also got yourself a 50 meg ultra wide angle shooter which employs quad pixel binning to again churn out bright good looking pics even when the conditions aren't amazing. My test shots came out pretty well, the Ultra can grab quite natural images that still look sharp when you chuck them up on a telly or a monitor. And the final lens slapped on that rear end is a 12 meg portrait shooter with a 2x telephoto finish, offering a narrow depth of field for a sexy bokeh style effect. Now again, this does its job pretty well. Occasionally the edge detection will get a little confused and your subject will need to stay stock still in more ambient light or you'll get now but blur, but overall it is good stuff. Your home movies will look pretty ruddy good too, as the Moto Edge 30 Ultra can record 8K res video or 4K video at 30 or 60 frames per second with the option of HDR10+. 
colors are boosted slightly when shooting at 4K res or above, but overall the Ultra does a good job for capturing home movies or just clips to share online, with top-notch stabilization and some great audio pickup too. Even fairly blustery conditions don't balk the sound too much at all, although the focus does occasionally struggle in lower light. Flip to the front and you'll find a mighty 60 megapixel selfie snapper waiting to shoot your face. This again handles a range of conditions to keep you looking as sharp as possible, although it's not quite as effective for colour capture and it does struggle in much softer light unless you use the screen flash. And that right there my lovelies is my full final frank review of the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra, a near flawless flagship smartphone, a few little issues to speak of such as the bulkiness that comes courtesy of those curvy screen edges. But besides that, I really enjoyed my time with this bad boy. It's a media monster, great for gaming, and that 200 meg primary camera can really spank out a bloody good photo. It's not cheap, of course, about 750 quid, and that Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro will be strolling along imminently as well to provide some pretty healthy competition. So what do you guys reckon? Are you tempted by the Edge 30 Ultra? Have you got an Edge 30 Ultra? And if so, leave your own review down in the comments below, please. And do pog subscribe, ding that notifications bell, all the usual YouTube jazz. Have yourselves a wonderful rest of the week. And hopefully, if this hasn't put you off too much, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, everyone. Love you.